Sometimes it's hard to come up with a completely original idea. Sometimes a company is willing to throw a ton of money at you so that you can take their idea and make a video game out of it. And a lot of the times, this turns out poorly. But sometimes you get games that stand the test of time and rise above the rest to show that not every blatant cash grab has to be utterly terrible. Today, we're gonna look at what I think are the best licensed video games of all time. Games that successfully took a given property and turned it into something worth remembering that completely stands on its own. If these video games were Broadway musicals, they'd be SpongeBob SquarePants and not Shrek. Now, longtime fans of the show may know that I have done this list in the past, but that video has been lost to the internet, and my opinions have definitely changed since then. For example, I genuinely put Cool Spot in the last list. Uh, that game is awful. I completed it since, and I like to think that my tastes have grown a lot more refined since then. Like always, these opinions are my own, and I'd love to hear about any other games I may have missed in the comments down below. So without further ado, let's pay those licensing fees and look at my top 10 licensed games. Number 10. You know, it's very easy to forget how big The Simpsons was because of how synonymous it is with everyday life now. Fish will swim, birds will fly, and The Simpsons will air on Fox on Sundays at 8 p.m. But in the 90s, The Simpsons was the hot property. There were stickers, candy, a number one hit song in the UK, and there were video games. Lots and lots of video games. While the quality of these games varies, to put it mildly, there have been some great ones. But which one do I pick? Road Rage, Hit and Run, The Game? No. If I want to include America's favorite cartoon family, I have to go with the first good Simpsons video game ever, The Simpsons Arcade Game. The Simpsons Arcade Game is a classic of one of my favorite genres, the beat-em-up, and The Simpsons always stood out amongst those other arcade games. While every other beat-em-up tried to look as badass and action-packed as possible, The Simpsons looked fun and silly. Not to mention that the graphics actually looked like The Simpsons and not just some pixelated version of The Simpsons. But the biggest selling point was being able to play as any member of The Simpsons family at the same time. You could deck people as Homer, ride around on a skateboard as Bart, whack people with a vacuum as Marge, or whip people with your jump rope as Lisa. Everyone controlled completely differently and made each playthrough unique based on where you were in line when you got to the arcade. Now there are a ton of Simpsons games now out there, and while some may technically be better than this one, the Simpsons arcade game will always have my heart. Number 9 Do you remember DuckTales? I mean, I do. I remember because I can't get that damn theme song out of my head since I was a kid. But I was happy to learn that I wasn't the only one who remembered when I saw the release of DuckTales Remastered. And it reminded me of one important thing, this game ducking rocks. While the remastered version is incredible, my true love lies with the original DuckTales game. It's just so fun and bouncy. Who knew that Scrooge McDuck was so agile? And not only that, but springing around on his cane? I guess with all that money he was hoarding, he was able to afford steroids and hydraulics. But the thing that really sticks to people is the music, which is just as catchy as the theme for the cartoon. The classic is obviously the music for the moon level. And it is still one of the best nostalgic bobs to ever come from video games. And yes, it's pretty damn good. Now, more astute listeners might be noticing, however, that the theme currently playing under this footage is not the Moon Song, as it tends to get claimed because of YouTube's great system. So instead, we've swapped in an equal, if not greater, tune, the main theme for Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball for the Super Nintendo. How does any of this have anything to do with DuckTales? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'll get back to it. DuckTales the game is just as fun as the cartoon and worth grabbing, whether it's the original or the remastered version. Number eight. You know what's cool? Turtles. You know what's cooler than that? Ninja Turtles. You know what's even cooler than that? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's right, we've got our favorite renaissance named reptiles in the building, folks. And despite what Michael Bay tried to do to them, I still think that the Heroes in a Half Shell are the most radical dudes of all time. But you know what would make them even better? Time travel. No, 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 not that. I'm talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. 
Turtles in Time is another great licensed beat-em-up from the 90s, and I loved this game as a kid. Actually, this game has a lot in common with the Simpsons arcade game, mostly because they both came from Konami, were released in similar arcade cabinet formats, featured a lot of the same gameplay elements, and were 90s as hell. But what makes Turtles in Time stand out more to me is, well, the stakes. You're not just trying to save someone in a city, you're traveling throughout time to recover the Statue of Liberty. You're straight up saving a representation of everything that America stands for, and the very low Cows make for some incredible settings during gameplay. Also, this is one of the few games where I like the console version better than the arcade version. The SNES version just had more to offer in my eyes. More levels, more bosses, the same combat that feels oh so good to execute. What makes it stand out even more is how many other TMNT games have tried this and not been as successful. Turtles in Time will always be the standard for what makes a good beat-em-up game for me. Fun and frantic combat, cool levels, and hanging out with your friends. As long as I can still be Leonardo, because he's my favorite, uh, he has two swords, which objectively means that he's the best. So, cowabunga, dude. Number seven. Oftentimes, when it comes to licensed games, a development team doesn't understand the IP, and the product reflects that. But there are those rare instances where not only do the developers care about the property, the original creators are involved as well. Take, for example, South Park. Now, look, early South Park games, in my eyes, were god-awful. They looked bad, they controlled worse. But worst of all, they weren't that funny. The developers completely missed the point of why South Park is hilarious and beloved. And critics agreed. It is because of this that both South Park The Stick of Truth and The Fractured Butt Hole work so well. South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker were heavily involved with the development process of both games, resulting in games that actually feel like seasons of South Park. They're absolutely hilarious and successfully lampoon traditional fantasy stories and modern superhero movies. But you can't just be funny to be on this list. You also have to be a good game. Fortunately, both the Stick of Truth and the Fractured Butthole nail this. Though the gameplay is not terribly deep or nuanced, both games create systems that actually feel like elementary school kids pretending to play a game. Stick of Truth leads more towards a traditional RPG combat system, while Fractured Butthole is more tactical with the grid-based system. But both games offer players a ton of laughs and fun if you like RPGs, superheroes, or battling eldritch horrors. Yeah, seriously. Number six. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was a movie that was made for me. It is the perfect blend of music, action, video games, and heart synthesized into a comedic supernova movie starring a lot of my favorite actors being directed and written by my favorite director, Edgar Wright. It just made it all the more fitting that such a stylized movie would get such an incredible game that kicks so much ass. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World returns to that classic licensed genre once again, the beat-em-up, and this one actually feels really different compared to the previous two I mentioned. First of all, this game is freaking gorgeous. It's also pixel art, but it has so much more detail to it. Just like the books and film, this game serves as a delightful homage to video games ranging from Guitar Hero to Mario, and I freaking love it, and I could watch this game for hours on end. Fortunately, it plays just as well as it looks. The combat is tight, and each of the playable characters plays differently, which is good because playing with three other people is the way to go. Being able to play as Scott, Ramona Flowers, and the rest of Sex bob -omb is a ton of fun. But beyond fun, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World may have the best soundtrack of any licensed game in that console generation. And that's saying something. And that's because it was created by Anamata Gucci, who are utter chiptune masters whose concerts I used to go to all the time. I just wish that it was nearly as good as that classic licensed retro gaming hit, the theme to Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball. Man, that song never gets old. God damn it, you keep talking about this game. Is it even any good? No, not really. Just the theme is really good and that's it. Just let it go. It doesn't even make sense in this list's theme. It's a person, not a franchise. You take that back, damn it. Cal Ripken Jr. is not just a person. He's an institution that no one knows about but me because I was the one kid who played this game and I fell in love with it because of the theme. Number five. Star Wars. 
There is no greater honor than to touch such a sacred IP. There's a powerful balance that must be struck. One that can corrupt and ruin lesser studios with expectations being so high. But Bioware was up for such a task, taking a grand risk, but with an even greater reward. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic takes us farther back than a long, long time ago and shows us what the Star Wars universe was like way before there was a single Skywalker or the Millennium Falcon. Bioware was pretty much given free reign to do whatever they wanted, allowing them to create a whole new world and add a warm Star Wars blanket over the whole thing to make it feel more comfortable. The worlds you get to explore are great. While they may look barren, all the different side missions and NPCs make everything feel alive and real. I had the most fun just talking to people and helping out anyone I ever could. Also, all the different party members are really interesting. Whether they be a polite yet homicidal battle droid or a disgraced Jedi who leans towards the neutral side of the Force, each character is deep and fascinating. Not to mention that this game has one of the best twists in gaming. Knights of the Old Republic is not just considered one of the best Star Wars games of all time, but simply one of the best games of all time. It boasts a sprawling open world, detailed combat customization, and deep branching conversations that served as the parent to every Bioware RPG that followed afterwards. So, if you ever enjoyed Dragon Age or a Mass Effect, don't just think Bioware, you have to think Star Wars 2. Number four. When your friends play games, and they want laughs and screams, what you gonna play? Ghostbusters! The movie for Ghostbusters is a beautiful combination of comedy and the supernatural. We all wanted to bust some ghosts, but despite the many cartoons and video game adaptations, nothing really scratched that itch. That is, until Ghostbusters the video game. Now, Ghostbusters the video game takes place a couple years after Ghostbusters 2, and you play as a rookie on the squad with the entire original cast reprising their OG roles. Getting to hear them all banter amongst themselves while you're the fifth wheel is actually one of the best parts of this game. The game is actually funny as hell, partially because of the script itself was doctored by Dan Aykroyd and the late Harold Ramis, but like I said with the South Park RPGs, that means nothing if the game isn't fun as well, and Ghostbusters the video game nails the busting mechanic very, very well. You operate your own proton pack and blast at ghosts with the same cool lasers from the films. They even curve around corners and destroy the environment just like the movies do. But the real fun comes by playing with friends, because the only thing better than busting ghosts with the original cast is busting ghost friends with your buddies, and busting makes me feel good. Now this may come as a surprise to those of you who know the old video that I did about top 10 licensed games, because this was actually my number one. And the game is still amazing, to the point where it got ported more recently to the current console generation, which I never thought we'd ever actually see. But time goes by, and my opinions have changed. Either way, you definitely should give this game a shot, considering that it's now available on pretty much every major platform. Number three. Now, I have a ton of positive memories with my N64. So many classic platformers and multiplayer games that defined the childhood of almost every 90s kid out there. But arguably, the most important of all these classic games has got to be GoldenEye 007. Before this, first-person shooters were confined to PCs and massive LAN parties. GoldenEye brought the FPS to home consoles, creating the home multiplayer standard that every gamer expects today. We wouldn't have Halo or Call of Duty if it wasn't for this game raising the bar like it did. And while by today's standard, some will say that it's clumsy playing with a single analog stick, I still feel this game holds up super well and is very much still fun to play. I recently made a video on this game a few weeks ago, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but if you wanna dive in, you totally can. I love this game game. Revisit this game once by yourself and as many times as possible play with friends. Trust me, you won't regret it. Number two. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. I love playing as Spider-Man. Most games are good, some are bad, but this is the best that he's ever had. Go play Insomniac Spider-Man. While there have been some really good Spider-Man games in the past, like the exceptional Web Slingers Adventures on the PS2, Insomniac Spider-Man for the PS4 blew them all out of the water a few years ago with the incredible combat, gorgeous graphics, and an amazing recreation of New York City. It actually feels alive and bustling. But you know what I love about this game? That it's created a meme so powerful because it's based on the unavoidable truth. Like gravity, like death and taxes, this game makes you feel like Spider-Man. Not just because you're a superhero with dizzying acrobatics and combat, but because you get to see everything he goes through narratively. Yes, you have some awesome quips and the fun crazy villains, but this title truly goes down into the trenches and human elements of what it's like to 
live out the idea of, with great power comes great responsibility. And then there's the exceptional fan service. You can tell that everyone involved in this project wanted to ensure that it was packed to the gills with references. Getting to unlock all the different costumes and enjoy their benefits is oh so satisfying. In addition to catching all the Easter eggs and twists put onto this particular take on the Spider-Man world, I definitely found myself on more than a few occasions just swinging around the city, listening to J. Jonah Jameson's podcast, making the overall experience that much more rich. And while that old Spider-Man theme song is catchy as all hell, there is one other theme that I love even more. Number one! Batman! Batman! In a surprise to no one, a Batman game is going to take the number one spot here. But which Batman game is going to take it? Arkham. Which Arkham game? The whole damn series, my dudes! Each Arkham game offers something different while keeping the same epic formula. Arkham Asylum is almost a perfect game. Arkham City is a perfect game. Arkham Origins gives you a great look at the beginning of Bruce Wayne's journey, and Arkham Knight takes everything that made the previous games great and adds the frickin' Batmobile. The counter-based combat is the perfect combination of easy to learn and hard to master. All the gadgets are really cool too. They serve as a great way to move around the different open world settings and solving puzzles. I love the Riddler challenges, and I love the combat challenges offered in each game. Each game has an epic narrative, putting Batman against the worst that Gotham has to offer. The Penguin, Mr. Freeze, Killer Croc, Poison Ivy, and so, so many more. Even if you don't get to fight them directly, just interacting with all of Batman's rogues gallery is a blast. But the most important characters have always been Batman and the Joker. Kevin Conroy is the perfect Batman, with his deep and stoic voice, while Mark Hamill is easily the most entertaining Joker of all time. But that's not to say that Troy Baker doesn't do a good job, because Troy Baker is actually a great, great follow-up to Mark Hamill's Joker. I love these games with every fiber of my being, and I don't think anyone could question that they are the best licensed games of all time. So, those were my top 10 licensed games. Let me know why I am wrong in the comments down below, but before you go, do me a favor, here's some playlists on screen. I have completed a lot of the games that you've seen here on screen. Go ahead and check out those videos if you'd like, and hey, if you want more top 10s, you can click or tap right here as well. Guys, I've been Jordan the Completionist, and I'll see you all next time.